Welcome to this painting tutorial for Warlord Games Victory at Sea. Today I'm going to be painting up this US Navy set featuring some of the measures or paint schemes used during World War II. In this US Navy fleet box, you get three packs of miniatures and for the paper products, you get some damage counters and then you also get these ship cards. Before you work on these miniatures, you'll want to dunk them in warm soapy water for about half an hour. This allows glue and paint to stick better. This set comes with a sheet of detailed instructions, so I will not cover how to put these together. However, I do have a video in the upper right hand corner that shows some of the tips and tricks on how to do this. The instructions do not, however, have any instructions for these Corsairs. What you want to do is you want to cut out this area of the ring of the Corsairs here so that you can just easily slip it over the stand and then push it into place to either denote bomber or fighter. Here are some pictures of some of the ships put together. These are really great looking models done in 1 by 1800 scale which is small but at the same time provides really nice details. Also in my previous Victory at Sea video, I show you how to magnetize the bases. There are multiple different benefits for this besides transporting them. You can actually put them on a little jig like this, which is a bottle filled with sand or water with a washer super glued to the top. These ships will be able to attach to the washer and makes it much easier to handle while you're painting. Make sure all your models are nice and dry from the wash earlier and now you want to apply a white primer with either an aerosol can or like me over here with an airbrush. Put white primer over all the models and make sure that they're fully coated. Don't forget to paint the indicator rings for all the Corsairs as well. The first color I'm going to lay down is Magic Blue. This is a nice, rich, vibrant blue that will signify the ocean on the bases. I apply this onto all the bases, and not only on the top of the base, but also the periphery of the base as well. It just makes everything look like a big body of water, and it's not as jarring as having a ring that's darker. I used the same Magic Blue for the Corsairs. Besides painting the stand or the base, I also paint the span between each of the planes. The reason why I'm using the same color as water is that when you look at it on the tabletop, it looks like it's blending into the ocean that it's flying over. For any of these steps, you want to be careful not to paint the ships or the planes. You want to leave those as white as possible. So just be very careful as you approach those features. I also go ahead and paint the indicator ring of the Corsairs in Magic Blue. Now on to the fun part, painting the camouflage measures for these ships. For this, I recommend going to a site called shipcamouflage.com. This is a great resource with a lot of pictures and descriptions and is really what I use as the basis of this video. Let's start with MS1 or Measure 1. This is a very simple scheme of light gray, dark gray, and brown. So for this measure, I'm going to be using these three speed paint colors from Army Painter. Starting with Ash and Stone for the light gray, I apply it to any area of the ship that is above the smokestacks, per the MS-1 spec. Next for the dark gray, I use Gray Floor Gray, and I apply this onto any of the steel areas of the ship that have not been painted Ash and Stone earlier. The only area I avoid are the top decks which are usually wood and for this measure they actually left it stained or brown. We will be applying the brown after this so for now you want to make sure that you keep those areas white. For the stained decks I'm going to be using sand golem speed paint and this is going to go on all the horizontal surfaces here. This is basically stained wood back in World War II in the early war days, ships during World War II still used wood as deck construction. And early in the war, there wasn't as much thought into camouflaging the upper decks themselves. With this final step done, you're basically done with the MS-1 scheme. The next measure we're going to look at is MS-5. This is basically MS-1, except with a wave motif being added to the front hull. So for the first half of this measure, you'll want to just paint what you would usually do in MS-1. Nothing's really very different. For the wave pattern in front of the hull, I use matte white and deep blue acrylic paint. And then with a fine tip detailing brush, I start with white and then I freehand in a fairly random looking wave like I'm showing here. 
After that, I switch to the deep blue acrylic paint and with the same brush, I fill in the area in the lower wave right here. After this simple step, you are done with measure 5. Next is measure 21. This is basically a combination of navy blue and deck blue. It is a very dark scheme and I'm going to be putting it on these two ships right here. Hyler Blue Speed Paint will represent navy blue and Cloud Burst Blue will represent deck blue. Starting with Hyler Blue Speed Paint first, I will apply it on all the vertical surfaces, namely the hull. And then after that, you have to be fairly careful with this scheme. You're going to be only applying it on the sides of the gun turrets and also on the sides of all the structures on the ship. You want to leave the horizontal surfaces basically white because we will be applying the cloud burst blue in those areas. Now I'll switch to cloud burst blue for the deck blue color. And this is really a very dark color. It's almost black. It's actually a very dark gray with a tinge of blue in it. And I had to look at references several times to make sure that this was the right color. But it really does make sense because compared to the ocean around it, it really does kind of hide the ship, especially from airplanes. This color is applied all over the wooden decks and also I put it on top of all the gun turrets as specified by the US Navy measure. Moving on to the USS Essex aircraft carrier, I'm actually going to be using a different color. I'm going to defy the paint scheme a little bit and paint the deck in a slightly lighter gray. First, I start out with Hylord Blue again, and this is applied to all the vertical surfaces, very similar to what I did on the Portland Heavy Cruiser that I painted just before this. For the deck of the aircraft carrier, I'm going to be actually using runic gray speed paint. So this is going to give a bluish gray, but with a lighter tint to go on the deck. So this just makes the aircraft carrier a little bit brighter. And this is consistent with a few pictures that I've seen of the Essex. The Essex also has some markings on its deck, namely the number 9 on the front and the rear of the flight deck. For this, I'll be using Grim Black Speed Paint and a detailing brush, and I'm going to be freehanding in the letter 9. And I do this as I show here. It's going to take multiple strokes to form a series of careful straight lines that together form the letter 9. Grim Black Speed Paint is great for this because it's got two properties that work in its favor. Number one, it's runny, which means it's very easy to form these shapes. And then secondly, it is also a little bit translucent, which means it won't look too jarring on that gray deck. It will actually look like numbers that have been kind of sitting there for a while or are weathered. After you complete one number nine on one side of the flight deck, you'll want to go to the opposite end and do the same thing. Try to keep it the same size and the same shape. Really just take your time and make sure that both of the number nines look fairly identical to each other. Next, I use some matte white acrylic paint this time, and I'm going to be painting these X's on the two centerline elevators of the USS Essex. The reason why I'm using acrylic white paint is that honestly, white or lighter colored speed paints just don't work very well on darker surfaces. So for this lighter detailing color, I opted for acrylic instead. This MS-1 scheme looks like a great camouflage, but it actually turns out pretty dark. To bring out the hidden features a little bit, I'm going to be applying some light dry brushing using electric blue acrylic paint and this big makeup brush. I apply some paint to the brush and then I just brush off a vast majority of it on a towel paper and then begin dry brushing all over the model. This brings out the upper and high edges of the model and it allows it to stand out a little bit more on the tabletop. This camouflage scheme is definitely effective in real life. But as game pieces that you're going to be playing with, you want them to look a little bit more distinctive. I use the same dry brushing with electric blue acrylic paint on all the navy blue portions of my USS Essex. This simple and fast dry brushing highlight method really allows the model to pop. 
Onward to the next measure, MS-22. This combines several colors with navy blue on the lowest portions of the main deck and then haze gray above that. The horizontal surfaces receive deck blue. For this scheme, I'm going to be using these three speed paints. I start out with Ashen Stone Speed Paint and I apply it onto all the guns and all the structures on top of the ships. My three Clemson class destroyers will be painted in this measure. Switching to High Lord Blue Speed Paint for Navy Blue, I apply it onto the hulls of all my destroyers. Next, I switch to Clark Burst Blue Speed Paint, which represents deck blue, and I apply it onto all the horizontal surfaces of the ship. Basically, the decks and also the top of the gun turrets, and really anything looking from top down that still looks white. I apply Clark Burst Blue to these areas. Next comes the most complicated measure in this video, which is going to be MS-32. This is part of the Dazzle scheme that was used in late war. So this involves multiple colors. For the vertical surfaces, there's going to be geometric shapes made out of light gray, ocean gray, and black. And on the horizontal surfaces, those random patterns will be in deck blue and ocean gray. To achieve this, these are the speed paints I'll be using. I start with Grey Floor Grey for Ocean Grey. I apply it with fairly straight lines in a lot of random directions just to make it as bizarre as it did in the later parts of World War II. I apply fairly spaced out patterns of this dark grey color all over the vertical surfaces of the hull and then I switch to the horizontal surfaces like I'm showing here and I apply this dark grey onto sections of the deck using fairly random looking straight line geometric shapes and after you're done with the dark gray you can switch to grim black speed paint and do the same thing with another set of random shapes the one thing that you want to keep in mind is for one single color you want to space them out a little bit don't bunch them all too close together I next switch to Ashen Stone Speed Paint, which I use for light gray, and I apply this only on the vertical surfaces per the measure. Any vertical surface that didn't get black or dark gray gets this light gray color, and make sure that there's no longer any vertical surface that's still white. You want to make sure you put this light gray on all those areas of the ship. For the remaining white horizontal areas of the ship, you'll want to use Cloud Burst Blue and apply it onto all those areas. After you're done with this last color, none of the ship should look white anymore. It should have one of these four colors laid down on it. The only exception to this rule are the lifeboats. If you see any lifeboats on the ship, leave those white. Just like MS-22 before this, this camouflage scheme is almost too good. It hides a lot of features, so you want to dry brush with some uniform gray acrylic paint and the same large makeup brush that I showed you earlier. Empty most of it onto a towel paper and then dry brush the entire model with this light gray. This simple highlighting step really brings out all the leading edges and gives your model a lot more visual appeal. Add a little bit more interest to your models, use some matte white acrylic paint and you'll want to paint all the lifeboats on any of the ships with this white. So this allows some areas of interest on these tiny models and really on the ones with the very convincing camouflage schemes like the MS-22, having white lifeboats really breathes some life into it and gives it a little bit more character. After that, use a wash like this strong wash from Army Painter and apply it onto all the lifeboats. And just make sure that it's spread out real nice so it doesn't look too dark, but this will give the lifeboats some definition. Next, we're going to work on something more unique, the F4U Corsair. We will be painting up this iconic Navy fighter with these three colors. I start with Beowulf Blue Speed Paint. You can also use Hylor Blue for this. And I paint the top of the Corsair fighters with this color. And I just go ahead and lay it down. Make sure that there's no white showing at all on the top of the fighters. 
I next switch to Void Shield Blue and with a detailing brush, I apply it onto all the tiny canopies on all the planes. A very careful application with this blue will give it the appearance of a glass canopy. Next, I switch to matte white acrylic paint and with the same detailing brush, I paint the underside of the planes white. This is to match the general camouflage scheme that they applied to these planes. They had white bottoms and navy blue tops. Now with the same white and same brush, I freehand in some very basic stars on the left hand side of all the wings. Honestly, this was pretty hard to do. You'll want to thin down your paint a little bit and with very careful freehanding, you can make it look somewhat like stars. It's very hard to make it look exactly like a star, but do your best. I use the same freehand technique to apply stars on both sides of the fuselage. Now these are tiny little details that are somewhat of a pain to put on. However, I feel that it really does add to the interest and also the overall appearance of these planes, making them look more real. Now I'm going to use matte white acrylic paint and with a flat broad brush, I'm going to apply this white onto the top of the waves with somewhat of a glancing blow from the flat of the brush. This transfers the white onto the high peaks of the waves, making it look like sea foam as ships traverse through them. I make sure to apply a strong application of white right up against the ships. And also on the wake over here, I make the sea foam a lot more white because that's usually what happens when ships move through water. And this effect works on any of the ship types. Here you can see me putting it on the other ships and it works just as well. For the names on the sides of the bases, you'll want to use the same paint and the same brush. And then you'll want to just carefully dab on the white paint onto the tops of the letters. Be sure not to press too hard. You almost want to feather it, go back and forth a little bit like I'm showing here, just so that the paint transfers into the top of the letters and nothing else. You can use the same method to apply the white onto the Corsair words on the base of the Corsairs. And the next part is optional. There's also a Corsair word on the bottom of the flight like this. You can use the white here also. Next is a pro tip. If you have multiple ships, for instance, the Clemson class destroyers that all look the same, you can put subtle identification markers on the backs of the bases like this. Here, I'm using stripes to tell the destroyers apart. I use the same identification features for the flights of Corsairs. Here, I use stripes to tell the four flights apart. To protect all your hard work, apply one layer of gloss varnish followed by one layer of matte varnish. This allows everything to be semi-shiny, but not too shiny. Here is the early war USS Houston with MS-1. The USS Chester in measure 5. Next are the USS Portland and Essex with measure 21. Then the Clemson class destroyers with MS-22. And the USS New Mexico with its Dazzle MS-32 scheme. And here is the picture of one flight of F4U Corsairs. I hope you enjoyed this video and I have more content on Victory at Sea coming up soon. I hope you'll join me for those and others. Until then, happy hobbying and I'll see you soon.